FC official fan club, and I'm here today with Jeremy D. Poister yep. and uh, Daniel Williams, drummer for the Christian metal core band The Devil Wears Prada, yes. here at the Revolution Live in Fort Lauderdale, performing this evening. And good afternoon, Thank Jeremy you. and Dan. Thanks for being here. You guys have had an epic year. I think the the release of Dead Throne was definitely our highlight of the year, at least for our band. Um, maybe even just the Dead Throne tour in general um, as well. I guess everything relating to Dead Throne in general has got to be the highlight of my year personally, at least. Yeah, just, it's... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, just getting out on the road and being able to perform the songs that we, we worked really hard on for like the last two years of our lives, pretty much. So it's, uh, it's really cool to see it all finally come together. Yeah, it's uh, like he said, like all all that we've been doing for the last couple of years has been kind of culminating to this point and in, in whether it's like logo related stuff or the music obviously most importantly and the shows and the vibe and, and our friendships and relationship as a band like has all come to this kind of point right here that's like I think all of us feel the most happy we've ever been in the band right now than we ever have you know so I understand that when Death Row was in its genesis an underlying theme of anti idol tree was to be the message of the album. D did that come to fruition, and which songs reflect that message? Yeah, uh, actually, all, pretty much the entire record is really um, has like a an underlying theme of anti idolatry So it's it's just a uh, just pretty much the that's the theme of the album actually. So it definitely came through. <laughs> um, whether it's about talking about like you know not putting your your girlfriend or something that you do or or whatever on, on like a pedestal and not to worship uh, false idols it talks about it in uh, Dead Throne Untitled lots of songs I personally love the instrumental Kansas on Dead Throne for a band who has rad vocalists <laughs> have you done a lot of instrumentals on past albums is, or is it something new uh, it's definitely new uh, to have on an album, but just the flow and, and the vibe of that song is something that we've always done as a band, um, the four of us guys. Um, we always do the whole interlude thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially like uh, him and, and Andy and Chris and I will just write these uh, like jams that kind of go in between the songs that like you said interludes for sets and we've been doing it for years now I think almost three years now we've just been having these little parts that go but that was kind of just an idea of I think we actually kind of like plan an on extension having, of it almost yeah I think we were going to put vocals on it too but we just kind of decided not to and, and just do an instrumental so Chicago was kind of the same way but written to have vocals on it um, but I think it's definitely something we'll carry on to yeah, the definitely. records now. We always do it. It's a good way to get between songs in a set, so then eventually that in-between thing becomes an actual song. Mm -hmm. Did you find any uh, newfound fans who Googled Throne out surfing the web, looking for Jay-Z and Kanye West <laughs> in their new album, Watch the Throne, and they stumbled upon The Devil Wears Prada? Or we Vice came That'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know that Mike came up with the album name almost close to now almost two years ago i think or, yeah or a year and a half or something just a long time ago and and i know when i heard about that record coming out i was just like man really like we had announced it so long ago <laughs> yeah i was like i know it's completely unrelated but i just seen a couple of things maybe looking up stuff on dead throne even myself that watch the throne stuff comes up but hey my Jay favorite part is when it. when on itunes it's like it was like number nine Dead Throne, number 10, Watch the Throne. I was like, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> Although it was yeah, like, baby. It was there like 10th week. They're like 10th week, week our first. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, for hip hop fans, Still Fly on the compilation Punk Goes Crunk uh -huh. was pretty creative. Did you guys break the ice with an infusion of rapping into metalcore on that album? Or did. Yeah. Maybe unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was more just for fun. Like, at the time, we didn't think anything of it. It was like, hey, uh, our label came to us. They were like, this other label wants you to do this song. Do you guys want to do it? And we were, like, throwing around ideas. We're like, whatever, we'll get Chris to do it. He can do it on his computer, and it'll be no big deal. And he, he wrote it on his computer, and then eventually that song just 
blew up and people were like, mm -hmm. this is the coolest new thing and all these bands started doing like rap, hardcore, metalcore yeah. covers and I was like, Because all the other bands Oh were no, like, what uh, did we start? <laughs> it was like All Time Low, Cobra Star shit, like Pierce the Veil, like all the other bands on it were super different sounding than yeah. So we were the only metal song on the record. Yeah, we were like the sore thumb, and then I think all these bands were like, What? That works? Alright, cover song, write it down. <laughs> and he's like, No. Why do we do this? We started a new genre, I guess. And we tried to <laughs> kill <next>. it ourselves. <laughs> we haven't played that song in years now, just because it's like so many. You can't go to a show like this anymore almost without hearing like a rap cover. Yeah. Do you have any plans to explore any other type of creative infusions we with different cover genres? Ideas. I would um, more instead of doing a cover, I'd like to do a collaboration with some, yeah. someone. Like doing not a uh, you know uh, on the on Dead Throne we have Tim Lambesis from As Lay Dying doing some vocals on one of the songs, but uh, I would much rather like get together with say Slipknot or As Lay Dying and write an actual full song. That would be cool. I'd like to do like a split too with a completely different sounding band than us. Oh yeah, that would be cool too. too. Anything like that that's just creative, I guess. Dan, I saw on your Facebook post about Florida shows, it's about time for some good old fashioned head banging in the South, Daniel. <laughs> How does it feel to you as a band and artists when you're on a stage and you see your music creating this cultural, visceral force that synergistically permeates out to the fans in the mosh pits. Uh, what goes on through your minds when you're reviewing that? It's the best feeling. It's seriously, it, it, the crowd's reaction completely 100% reflects onto the band. Because oh, yeah. whether if the crowd is not getting into it, the band can't really get into it. So the fact that we can write, write music that makes people move in a way that in turn makes us move it's like a giant circle of energy and it's just like feeds off each other and some shows just they take you over the top it's seriously the best feeling in the world if we come off stage and the crowd was just kind of blah all of us are just sitting here back here and it's like depressing it's like no one would want to be in that room <laughs> just because we take it so personally if people don't enjoy the show you know I see you guys have some UK tour dates lined up for early 2012. Have you have you been to the UK before? Is that yes? I think it's our third, actually fourth time going over now. I think. Any plans to expand into a full blown European tour? Yeah. Uh, well, um, I I definitely think we were planning on going back. We were actually supposed to go to Germany here shortly, but um, I think something happened. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get back this year. Yeah, I think probably around no. festival season we'd like to do kind of similar to what we did last year, but a little more expansive and, and hit some more European markets in there rather no, than just no UK, definite, but. no definite plans yet though. Yeah, Daniel, when I listen to your drums and Jeremy guitar riffs on tracks like HTML Rules, dude, yeah. I can't help but think of Metallica. I mean, it's awesome. But, were there any predecessor bands who influenced you um, and your style as musicians? Yeah, at that time it was a lot of, uh, compared to Metallica, younger bands, uh, Under Oath and, and As Lay Dying and Norma Jean and, and just a lot of like Christian hardcore bands like that at the time. But, uh, you know, we were also, I was 17, 18, he was, you know, 20 and, and that was just where we were um, at that point. But I think definitely as we've gotten older, the influences change and, and stuff like that. But it's kind of interesting to look back on it like that, I guess. Not only that, but I definitely listened to Metallica much before I listened to Under Oath. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I definitely listened <laughs> to a lot of Metallica, Pantera, Slayer in my day, but much younger than before. Much, much, uh, much before I was into this type of music. Van Halen. Like, yeah. And he did have a Van my, Halen. My stepdad loved Van Halen, so I definitely listened to a lot of that too. <laughs> On the subject of Christian metalcore, for fans not familiar with that genre, it seems to be a paradox: Christian and metal, and you have Devil in the band name, which seems mm -hmm. to be contradictory. The way we look at it is bring bring light into a dark place. Uh, so it's like it doesn't. I don't think it necessarily matters how it sounds or or anything like that as long as it makes you feel or makes you think a certain way or you know you can relate to it in a certain way or it helps you in a certain way um, 
I think yeah, that's, that's that's more the idea behind it is more important than just the way it sounds, I guess. Yeah, it baffles me to think about like a like forty five year old pastor or something going like I've heard, I had kids tell me their pastors are like, Don't listen to this, don't listen to this kind of music in this band. I'm like, how can your brain not wrap around the idea that it sounds like rah, 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 but there's meaning in it, you know. <laughs> like, I we even you know playing electric guitar on on a Christian pop song is so different than biblical music or praise mm-hmm. or anything like that. So, uh, I just think it's so shallow minded to for them to draw the line at that point. So, so the message is a very positive of Christian oh, yeah. values. Hundred sure. percent, yeah. Mm-hmm. And election year is coming up. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not uncommon to see bands and artists expressing their political views and even endorsing campaigning with can- candidates. What do you think about musicians who use their popularity to extend their political agenda or options? I kind of, I, I think it's awesome. I, I think that anybody that writes music writes music for a reason, like a, 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 or for the most part. So if, whether it's our band talking about our our uh, what we believe in or somebody else talking about the girl they want to write about or the beliefs that they have or the politics that they believe in like whatever it is they're writing music based on the fact that they want to get something out so I think that I can respect if somebody else can respect the fact that I want to sing about this or I want to play drums for a band that sings about this then I should be able to respect somebody else that wants to play in a band that wants to sing about politics yeah, see, a lot of people say that bands should have a certain level of, um, I guess, consciousness about how their views affect how people see them. I've heard a lot of people say, I don't think this punk band should say this, because then all their fans are just going to think that way, regardless of what their real thoughts are. But in my opinion, if their fans are that shallow that a band will warp them to one way, then even a debate will take them the other way. Uh So I don't really think that's an excuse um, that people can really use. If someone's that shallow, then they're in a lot more trouble if they're (laughs) only going by what a band says Uh than not wise. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, a couple, just a couple more quick questions. Uh-huh. What do you think about Spotify and Pandora? Are they these apps helping the bands? Or, knows, I, I don't or know. Are they just I'm, another web? Tool I think Pandora. Off the artists. I think Pandora is awesome. Uh, I think that they have legitimate reasons for asking for a subscription-based fee. I don't necessarily think that Spotify and RDIO do. I actually had a paid pers- or paid subscription to both Spotify and RDIO and uh, I'm just personally against them because I paid $10 to get my Spotify membership and then with that $10 downloaded my entire band's catalog of music and that alone is worth more than $10 whether not only is it worth more than $10 to to the label but it's worth more than $10 to me because that that what five CDs that's that's like 50 bucks that you would normally pay and I got it all for 10 bucks plus all of Jay-Z's records plus all of Mm -hmm. uh, Alicia Keys plus all of every band that I can think of all for free it's all on my phone it's on my laptop it's on my my iPad like I have no uh, there's no bad part about it other than the fact that I have to pay 10 whole dollars every every like month that's not I mean I could download way more than ten dollars worth of music on Spotify mm-hmm. in an hour, let alone a month. And then not only that, but I've it's never I've never I downloaded my entire catalog, never saw a dime from it. Just saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what is your best kept secret? What is one thing about the Devil Wears Prada that most fans don't know but should? Or just people mm-hmm. really I think is the big thing. A lot of kids like always get on Twitter and are like, You're my hero, if I could just be like you, like you're the best person, you're this, you're that and it's like it's not, not like I <laughs> Yeah, I don't wanna represent us as bad, horrible people that do bad things and say bad things and, and do that. But I also don't wanna dishonestly pretend that we are saints when we're not, you know, and I feel like that puts us on an unfortunate pedestal that then someone that might look up to you is gonna feel like crap when they don't meet up to that. Yeah, know? absolutely. That and which happens a lot. For example, the other day on my Twitter, I typed a tweet that had the word "badass" in it, and everybody got so angry at me. Like a couple kids were like tweeting at me, like, "I can't believe I follow you and you curse." I'm like, 
when did I ever say that I didn't <laughs> curse? Or when did I... Or in fact, like, when did... I, I don't know. It's just like people always put you up to here and then if you do anything wrong then you're like you don't match up to their expectations i can't match up to a million people's expectations yeah it's I like match up to my own things that i look up to my parents so much and and things that i've seen and and heard them do and and you know at one point in my life i would have considered them like the perfect quintessential quote unquote christian people but you know just seeing things that they are and that they've done and and then seeing how I still think they're they're good people and Christian people and, and I would hate for someone to, to see the band and look at that and spend all their effort and time going, they said this, they said that, they did that, they did that. It's like, it's such a, a bigger meaning than those trivial things, you know. Everyone's human. That's yeah. my secret. <laughs> and to yeah. wrap it up, what can fans expect to see tonight when the Devil Wears Prada performs here at the Revolution Live? Lots of sweaty dudes. Sweaty dudes. <laughs> I think, honestly, I think it's our best live show that we've had in a long time. I we think just, so, too. We put a lot of, of thought and time and, and money into the production aspect of it. And just, you know, some of these people have seen us five, six times now. So to give them something that's, um, you know, more than just us playing the songs again, I think yeah. it's kind of cool. Definitely. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having us.